right. So today, as you can see, I am at home. And I think that I wanna start making more YouTube videos here. First of all, frankly, the lighting is better. I mean, the first video I made, I was in this dark room and you couldn't tell if it was daytime or nighttime. And frankly, I don't think I could either. And so the, the second thing, of course, is sometimes, it's very rare for me, but sometimes I'm actually more productive at home. Uh, I'm actually, I think, of the rare per, uh, opinion that I think it's a mix. Uh, I am also an extrovert though, so I think it's a bit different for me. I think introverts tend to love to be in solitude and working and focusing. For me, I actually love hanging out and being around a bunch of people. It gives me energy. With that being said, sometimes that's actually a distraction for me. When there's so much going on, I actually have to force myself to come into solitude, which is what I'm doing now to actually get any work done. What am I working on today? The first thing I'm doing is uh, I'm designing a new website for, for my church. It was originally built on Weebly. Uh, our pastor built it. It's, it was it did its purpose. It's been overall uh, uh, useful and um, it's done its job. However, I think it's time, I should say we think it's time to actually redesign it. Uh, I'm building the new website just in time for actually we're having a big conference in September to celebrate uh, 20 years of being a church. And on top of that, our lead pastor, who, or I, I guess I should say our founding pastor who just recently uh, tired, uh, he didn't really retire. He's moving on to doing uh, other things that he felt called to do but uh anyway he, he was actually the founding pastor of the church so he's been around for also 20 years so we're kind of celebrating a lot of um growth uh as a church the 20 years of growth that we've experienced as well as celebrating the future that we feel god has for us so that's number one is i'm redesigning the website just in time for that conference number two i'm actually wrapping up august content calendar for the church as well. So one of the things that I think is important that I've not been incredibly great on doing historically is creating content calendars. It is very hard sometimes to kind of wing it in terms of making posts on social media, um, especially when there's a lot going on. For example, August is going to be a crazy month. It's going to be super busy. There's going to be lots of stuff happening. And the last thing I need to worry about is, oh, I better make a post for today. So I'm trying to think ahead and make that content calendar, something that I have not historically been great on doing. I'm also creating a YouTube video. Uh, ideally, you're actually watching it right now. That's me actually having finished the YouTube video. And then the most important thing is that I'm actually catching up on some mundane work that I have been putting off. As a creative, I think the common curse, and I, I, I use that word lightly, of course, of creatives is that we tend to be procrastinators. We are so into our heads and so into our craft that we sometimes put off the work that needs to get done, the stuff we don't want to do. Now, I should also add on to that, I do have uh, ADHD, I have been diagnosed with ADHD, um, so there is, of course, that medical side of things, you know, that, that, that I also contend with, but no matter what, and it, almost every creative I have talked to struggles with procrastination, and I am definitely not innocent. Actually, it was... Uh, in high school and, and honestly, mostly through my entire life, procrastination has been the, the bane of my existence. It's the way that um, I feel like in terms of, of my walk with God, my Christian walk with God, I feel like it's been a hindrance. Like it's, um, it's been used against me to keep me from, from focusing on God and focusing on the things that he wants me to do. I, in fact, I remember even in, in middle school and high school, I had D's and F's, not because I was um, a bad, you know, I, I, because I didn't know anything. I actually scored really high on my tests, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I'm, I'm a really good test taker. And I think that I'm pretty knowledgeable of what I'm, what I'm doing. The problem was, is that I got bored with the, the homework. So homework was my Achilles heel. 
I wouldn't do homework. It wasn't until I, I actually started going to college that I was diagnosed with ADHD and um, learned to have some coping skills with, with, with procrastination. For example, I had to make some switches in my life. When you think homework, you think of working at home. When it was in college, I realized I don't work from home. I, I just can't. So I worked in the library. I put headphones in that I apparently forgot to take out. Oops. I would put, yeah, I put headphones in. I would zone out. I would, I actually rented a cubicle in the library, or, but my, the Bible college I went to had cubicles in the library that you can actually rent out. So I put a lamp in there. I made it very productive. I had my zone and I loved it. I actually flunked my first semester of college. Um, that was kind of humiliating. But again, I didn't know. So, you know, procrastination and ADHD go hand in hand. And I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you, um, um, you know, whether to have medication or not. I, I, it's not my place. I don't know. For me, I've spent most of my post-diagnosis without medication, um, only because uh, I wanted to learn coping skills naturally first before I went back on, on medication. So I guess I should say I was on medication before and it it made me more productive and it was helpful, but for me it was uh, actually, I felt like a zombie half the time. I felt like I was being forced to be functional at a level that I wasn't ready to be functional at yet. So I ended up quitting the medication I was on and learning how to naturally cope with my, with my brain and learn how to work with it. These are the five things that I've learned what to do. One, have a space that's your shut off space, I guess. So that would mean you go there and you plug into something and you can work and that's all you do. Um, the other thing that I have learned with having my space is that if it has to be perfect, then it has to be perfect. Um, I don't know if that's correct or not. I, that, that might seem dysfunctional uh, or maybe even a little OCD, but my office space, my desk, I like having it in a certain way. Uh, it needs to be inviting for me to focus in. Um, I need to have a cup of coffee because I, I do love coffee and that's what works for me. Uh, that might change over time as I learn more things and I get better, but that's what's worked for me is having my my, my shut off space, I call it. The next thing that I would suggest is leaving your shut off space. What? No, I really mean that. Um, take frequent breaks that are planned. So don't get up because you feel that urge to get up because that's procrastination hitting you probably. But schedule times to go and take a 15 minute break and turn off your brain. You need to do that. Sometimes I've even had breaks that have been as long as an hour. I've had to just get up and walk out the building and just go on a walk because my brain was overloaded and I needed to think and refocus and reprioritize what needed to be done. And the only way that would happen is if I went on a walk with no phone and just was alone with my thoughts. The third thing I would say is to have a planner in front of you. I now I'm using a digital planner. I've been trying Notion out for a while. Uh, I use Notion for everything to do with the church and for my business, and I've even picked it up for personal. I, I budget off of it. I have a weekly planner that I, I use a template with, and I check things off as I get them done. I, for me, ma uh, uh, blocking off certain moments of time doesn't work for me, but it might work for you. Uh, so for example, I don't block off every half hour or hour in terms of what I'm going to do. I just have a to-do list for the day. And that tends to ease the pressure off of me because I tend to pressure myself and go, I am behind schedule. Oh my goodness. I tend to, to panic and then I procrastinate. So for me, I have learned to just have a to-do list for the day. And then if I don't get that to-do list done for that day, then I have to move it to the next day, and to the next day, and to the next day. Uh, a a sub-tip, I would say, if that's a word, is front-load your work as best you can. So Mondays and Tuesdays are my busiest days. I get as much done as I can on those days, so that way as the week progresses, it's less and less stressful, and I can take on more of the things I want to take on. Or I can go and be done for the week. Uh, 
in, in theory. Um, and no matter what, it allows me to be flexible from for the latter part of the week. Number four is, I would say, give yourself a break. So one of the things that uh, I've been learning from even my, my, my own biblical counselor is to rest. Uh, that's something that's very underrated. We as creatives want to be very ambitious people or, you know, in terms of I want to finish that project or I want to design that, that next new website or I want to uh, build a Taj Mahal or something. We tend to be very hard on ourselves and we work too hard. And I have been 120,000% guilty of that. So I've been practicing the way of the rest. Uh, I read a book by John Mark Homer called uh, The Relentless Elimination of Hurry. And uh, it is an incredible book. I strongly recommend it. Um, burnout is a real struggle and risk for us as creatives, as, especially in the church world. So if you're a pastor who is also having to be the social media manager, who's also running the live stream, who's also running this, who's also running that, you need to rest. If you are the creative director in a larger church or medium-sized church, um, you also, you need to rest. There's a lot of stuff going on. And if you are a director, that means that you're typically probably directing people, volunteers or otherwise. And if you want to be an effective leader, you have to rest and model that for your team to show that that's okay. So rest, what does rest look like? Uh, for me, that's either reading a book, or it's going on a walk. I've actually learned to walk almost every day. Uh, I haven't been that great for the last couple weeks, but normally I like to walk three or four times a week. And I'm talking like an hour, hour and a half of me walking along the river and, and just being alone and being quiet with God. So walking, reading. Uh, another thing I might do is I might watch a movie with my family. Uh, that's totally okay. And you know, uh, furthermore, my wife and I are gamers. Uh, we love playing video games. Uh, another thing I might do, uh, we go hiking or we go fish. I go fishing or yeah, in the fall and, and winter, I, I might go hunting. Um, you know, things that are outdoors that brings me life and brings me uh, uh, closer to that, that state of rest. And, and of course, most importantly, uh, um, you know, reading scripture is uh, amazing for us. If we re actually sit restfully and read scripture, uh, just as we, you know, and, and spend time with God, just as we would if we were spending time with a friend, that I've learned has been monumental towards uh, uh, me accomplishing more because I'm, I'm taking off the weight that I put on myself and putting it on him, on, on Jesus. And it's also helped me to learn to slow down. You know, again, I, uh, my procrastination is oftentimes because I am overly ambitious and very hard on myself. I tried to do too much. The thing that I oftentimes do. So that's, I think that was four, five is don't be too hard on yourself. Uh, it kind of ties into number four. Uh, I think I've said it already in number four, but don't be too hard on yourself don't set unrealistic expectations that's something that i've been working on so i will sometimes with a client i've been guilty of this i will over promise and under deliver uh, I've, I've absolutely been called out on that uh, so what i will do is think okay to create uh you know i still need deadlines so maybe i double what i think it takes so for example, if I think it'll only take me 40 hours to finish a project, I might give myself 80 just to be safe. Uh, or more realistically, let's even dive into this. Um, if I say to somebody that I can have that done in a couple hours, I've learned that what, what really ends up happening is it's a few. So instead of two hours, it's like four or five. So I'll just jump and over overestimate. And that has actually changed my life for the better. Uh, it's even helped even when I'm driving. Sometimes I will actually say, well, I'll be there in 15 minutes and it's not 15 minutes, it's like 45. I've been that person. So I've learned to go, I'll be there within the hour. See what I did there? Procrastination, 
is definitely something I'm working on. It's been something I have been trying to work on for, for a long time and uh, something that, that we creatives are probably going to continue to work on. You know, it's nothing to be ashamed about. It's something that we are, uh, uh, our brains are just designed to think of things and be creative and we just have to work with that and we have to learn to accomplish the, the things that need to be done within the, the, the limitations our brains give us. And again, we can always ask God for, for help with these things. Uh, that's something that I'm also been learning is I can actually pray about this and give it to him. Uh, so I guess that's actually bonus tip number six, or number one. It's bonus tip number one, but it's tip number six, is to actually give it to God. You can totally just pray about it. You can pray about every single small project that, that needs to get done, and just go, hey, I I need help, God. Like, I'm having a hard time uh, filling out this content calendar. Uh, and then, then you kind of enter a state of worship as you do it. And, by accomplishing the goals that you're doing, you're actually worshiping God. So, anyway, that's it. That's all I have for today. Anyway, have a great, uh, have a great rest of your day.